Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulova, and right now we're playing the beautiful little peninsula of Kamchatka, but oh, American weapons shipment. A ship flying the US flag was spotted entering the Sea of Okhotsk, and as we expected, it was heading for the port of Magadan full of US weapons to prop up their fascist puppet. While in the open Pacific, under the protection of the US fleet, such a raid would be a suicide. However, so close to Japanese waters and with the need to maintain plausible deniability surrounding the support for Magadan, the ship remained largely undefended aside from a small but heavily armed contingent of mercenaries. <clears throat> Despite receiving small arms fire and several rockets from shoulder fired AT weapons, resistance soon subsided when a second submarine emerged from the water, radioing a warning that should res that should resistance continue, the ship would be torpedoed. It seems the captain understood it was better to sacrifice a small part of the shipment for the sake of his vessel. A sentiment we wholeheartedly agree with. Success! Great. Look at that. We get more supplies. We love it, even though we have nowhere near the amount of supplies we need. But, um, a couple of things. So, we're completely done with fuel. Like, fuel, like, I'm surprised how easy it was to get fuel. I thought fuel would actually be the most difficult thing to get. But we've got more than enough fuel, so why don't we use it? we got plenty of uh, fuel here, and we did this so instead of creating shipments. How would you add fuel to the stockpile? Because we could use the fuel to get more naval XP, right? Right. Absolutely. So go ahead and train until we're out of fuel and kind of hurt us. That's okay. So, a couple comments to go through as well. And yeah, n next time we're just going to keep getting more and more supplies. Supplies, supplies, supplies. But really increase armor professionalism because we need to get two... No, this one, the trial might not be too bad to get to and try that one out. A stamp out unsanctioned piracy, so we need way more professionalism. So, that's not bad, but that's not very good. Nine, who? Oh, how much do we get? 0.15. That's so high, though. But we have safe passage for Americans. Regardless of the overture we make to America, the elephant in the room will undoubtedly be our pass and continued raiding against our ships. Although we can't take back the pass, the sooner we end the raids against Americans, the further away the pass will be. As a result, Admiral Yumashev will issue an order, effectively immediately, that all raids against American ships will cease. Any crew found to have engaged in piracy of American-owned ships or in possession of stolen American goods will face immediate court-martial, and the judges will not be lenient. Nice. Uh, let's see, I do want to do Pirates in the Caribbean, but I want to come over here so we can raid the Japanese ships as much and as fast as possible. Finding an M. One rather significant problem still remains in our plans to gain American aid for our operation. We have no contact in the American government. Fortunately, we may have a solution. One of our captains who frequently travels to America on smuggling missions claims to have a connection the, to the American intelligence services. How he came into such powerful friends is not clear. It is equally not clear as to why this connection has not been revealed before, but it's a lead we can't afford to ignore. Very good. Um, I do want to do this one, definitely, but at this point, doing anything down here doesn't make any sense. So add fuel to the stock because we have plenty of fuel. And we need more ships. Ship, 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 ship. To train, 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 train. Let's get more naval XP, naval XP, naval XP, naval XP. So, that'll be very, very good. Uh, add fuel to stockpile. Yep, because we get one each month. So, why not use it, right? Absolutely right. And in about 10 days. Ooh. Actually, th th you see that one for 75? You get 10 at naval XP and 9 army professionalism. But you can conduct naval infantry exercise for half the naval XP, 6 professionalism, and then do this one for even more naval professionalism. So... Overall, I think this one's a little better to do, so. But maybe that's just my opinion. Yeah, we got plenty of fuel. Just keep training, 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 training. And next up, we're going to keep going with... I think I said to do this one. It is only 63, so really doing these would not be that great, but we can still do them anyways, because we can. We can even make guns, wow. We could do that one, but more stuff here. So is it really 70 days each time? Gain 53 supplies. That's pretty darn good, I'd say. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. We still get at least one more supplies too, so that's not too bad. Oh, people are killing each other now. Hopefully, things good. don't get too bad, and the divine mandate of spirit does not come knocking anytime soon. So it is 70 days every single time, so that kind of sucks. So we need another cotton for you for that. Get some more fuel, because we need it. We need way more supplies, though. Ooh. But, fighting it in. Shedrim was heading back into the warm... After inspecting the crew of Rykov, today was a particularly cold day. All he wanted to do was get back inside, behind him. Running after him was Captain Yevgeny Ivanov, Comrade Admiral. Shedrin turned to Ivanov, who he knew as a particularly effective smuggler, the only captain in the fleet who had not had a single shipment seized. I'm sorry to bother you, sir, he panted, panted as he offered a quick salute, but I might be able to assist you. You put out a request for anyone who might be able to find a connection to the Americans? Ah, uh, of course, Ivanov. Your routes often take you to Alaska, Shedrin remembered. Yes, sir, and... <clears throat> Yevgeny paused for a moment, wondering if the words he was going to say would be his last as a free man. I think I can get in touch with the CIA. Shedrin stopped in his tracks, looking directly at Ivanov. If he were a suspicious man, he might have considered the possibility that this connection might have had something to do with Ivanov's impeccable smuggling record. He. 
may have considered it something to do with the fate of failed raids against American ships of late, but he decided it was not a suspicious man. Follow me, Ivanov. I'll explain what I need you to do, but poke the kraken. One of America's conditions of the cooperation with us is that we step up our raids against Japanese shipping. While this is incredibly dangerous, they have offered us share intelligence on potential lucrative, highly defended, lightly defended ships. We would get to keep any of the uh, profits of these raids. Of course, they seem content enough with the prospect of Japanese shipping being interrupted. Great. Great. We love it. And we can't raid American ships anymore, which sucks, but whatever. Um, you know what? Because we're going to do this one next, let's save that for when we get the focus done. So let's start just a neutral ship for now. And we'll do that for later. And we have 50, and we could really use some more naval XP. Mm. I really want to do that one. That's really not too bad. I mean, both of both 25 to 50, you get more naval professionals, and we get less naval XP. But by doing this one immediately, you get to do it the next raid, which is pretty good. Establish naval attaché. Uh, actually, naval XP is actually really, really good to get. So, yeah, that would not be bad. But we need more political power now. But let's see what the Pacific black market. Although our smuggling efforts started to secure the basic necessities, we've assembled a relatively large network. In most ports across the Pacific, we can find a sympathetic official willing to look the other way or a local legitimate businessman who gleefully waits our next ship. Wherever our ships go, unattainable American or Japanese goods follow. As a result, an emerging black market is beginning to appear with us at the center of the web. While not intended, this could provide a serious source of supplies, much needed in the planning of our operation, hopefully. They won't miss us too much when we are gone. And the Germans of war, weapon shipment. Uh, let's see. We recently looted a shipment of weapons from a passing cargo ship. For such a deadly cargo, the ship was relatively lightly defended, despite the resistance of mercenaries aboard were preparing to put up. The quickly stood down once our destroyer had fired a few salvos uncomfortably close to the ship's hull. With the mercenaries putting down their weapons and our crew safely aboard, we can commandeer as many crews as we could transport and let the ship on its way with a considerably lighter load. Success. Not as good as much success as I would have liked, but the terms. Ivan Yumashev, Grigory Shedrin, and Emil Spidronov. Oh, look at that. We're all standing on the dock awaiting the return of Yevgeny Ivanov. As his ship, the Shlistvichik, moored up, Ivan bound up the gangplank. Here, well, here are the terms. We're going to continue our policy of non-aggression against the Americans and their allied states, but we are to drastically increase our raids against the Japanese, and they are under no circumstances to recognize us as a legitimate state. You must have thought for a moment. That's it. Anything else? They said they would be happy to share intelligence on potential high-value targets, but other than that, no, sir. You must have sighed. Well, we're going to have to take their offer. It's not like we have much choice. Did they give any indication about allowing our passage through the Panama Canal or allowing us to dock in their ports? I'm afraid not, sir. They made me wait two days before responding with just those terms. They said any future deals dependent on display of our sincerity. They're just using us, interjected Spiridonov. Why should we put our men at risk to appease Americans? Because there is no other choice. More fuel, because why not? And, let's see. Nothing else here, really. I want to get to that one next, though. I really do. But, how about a black market, shall we? Maybe we can buy a lot of goods on the black market using some fuel, maybe? That'd be kind of actually pretty good. So, man, it is very laggy now. Wow, what is going on? Mm, I want to wipe. Improve efficiency routes. Uh, remove 10 days. A naval docker would be good. Getting more convoys would be really good, too. This stuff is okay. We don't really need it, though. So, parts in the Caribbean. Naval XP would be pretty good. Concerned about our powers, level piracy will no longer decay. Well, how about we improve efficiency routes? There's always been improvements to be made. Looking back in the months since we began to seriously expand our operations, although we have come far, there's still much to do. Now we have grown in size, there's still opportunities for streamlining and better allocating our resources. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, um, we could do that one. I want to maybe do this one just because we get more naval XP. I mean, it's 9 versus 6. And I want to keep quite a few. You know what? Mm. It's taking too long. Screw it. Let's do this one. Because I want to raid as fast as possible. Oh, it's going to take so long to do, though. Oh, that sucks. Yes, 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 yes. The world's falling apart. Very good, very good. Cut back. I mean, spending political power for this is not just not worth it right now. Because we only get... How much? Or how little? 0.15. South African War. Not bad. Domino shall stop. That's nice, everyone. They're all dying. But down for a sip of coffee, shall we? We shall. Man, that's some hot coffee. Hmm. A coup in Norway. Very cool. Alright, and... Well, time to do the Japanese stuff. 40% chance of failure. Hopefully we do okay, though. Hopefully we do okay. 98 supplies. That is nowhere not enough, just even for our battleship. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be very successful with this. Oh my goodness. What the heck is this? The Pacific Black Market? 
It allows us to buy equipment that we've been able to acquire from a raid or at unnecessary supplies. Military equipment or oil shipments can be bought or sold for supplies. Every 30 days, the price update mission is complete, which will set and which will set buy and sell prices to random value than 20% of the base price. If we can cover the cost of the item we wish to buy or have enough for the item to sell, we can make a trade, which will use up one of our trades. Trades is also reset every time the price update mission completes, with the amount of trade dependent on the total size of our smuggling network which can be invested into the Smuggling Trade Network Decisions tab. Once an order is placed, we will receive the items when the price mission update mission completes. Should we have enough supplies, buying when prices are low, and so when the pro they're high, could yield a significant profit. Oh, so now is why we have infantry equipment. Fuel shipment? Um, hmm. So, 100 minus. Okay, so trade's available. Infantry equipment, that's how much we have, right? That's how much we have. Supplies, 98 now. Trades available five. Well, we're selling low. That's a bad idea. That's actually why'd I do that. Oh well, whatever. If it doesn't go well, well then I'll fix it. Fix it hopefully off screen. Hmm. And create network efficiency. Man, yeah, that would have been nice, but whatever. But how about we do improve route efficiency? So how about we stop selling our fuel and do other stuff then? Because political power is so hard to get. Buy, I mean, technically 100 is a base, so. Yeah, I should not have sold it at 83, but whatever. Buy fuel shipments? No, we're not buying anything here. And it costs how much? And supplies? No. No, 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 no. Cool, not bad, not bad. I'm definitely learning this. Oh, there we go. So three days left. Let's go and get this 10 more supplies. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, I don't want to use PP for this, though, but we kind of have to. And it's still 70 days. Yes. That's unfortunate. Oh, so we can buy this stuff if we really wanted to. Supplies, but I don't want to use all the supplies like this. Japanese weapons shipment. After reading what we assume to be a normal cargo vessel, it turned out it actually been transporting a significant amount of Japanese-made weaponry. The ship headed east made away from the sphere has been of great confusion to us, but we've decided not to dig too deeply and count ourselves lucky on our haul. Success. Great. Slightly more political power. Great. Just go and do this one, then. Satisfactory. Oh, look at that. It's level 41. It's not bad. Average professionalism. Nice. Okay, that doesn't help us that much, but whatever. And then requisition civilian ships. As our activities have expanded, so the ships in the possession. More of these should be introduced into service in our smuggling network, which is probably a pretty good thing to do. Croatian winter. Hopefully no one comes knocking anytime soon. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So we need more naval XP now. Maybe I should have waited, but whatever. Yeah. This does not seem very good for us. Uh, black market stuff. Oh, oh, there we go. Anti-tank. That, now that's worth it. So how many supplies we got? Because I'm just going to load up our battleship with supplies for now. We still don't have enough. But the battleship is ready to go. At least we got one. All right, we got one. Because each one of these takes, what, 400? And these ones take 400 probably as well, probably? Maybe, maybe not. We're going to need thousands of supplies. Holy crap. But at least the battleship can make it. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, come on, man. Uh, establishing naval attaché. Let's do that one. Captain Ivanov's overtures seem to have been successful, and the Americans are willing to help us out. Ivanov will act as a contact between the fleet and the CIA. Due to the Americans' wishes to keep our cooperation secret, he will be removed from his current duties and given the role of our unofficial naval attaché to America. He will continue to travel to America on smuggling ships as before. However, when in port, he will update his contacts on our progress and attempt to encourage them to further their support for the fleet. Good idea. Very, very good idea. We have maxed out fuel now. Wow. Uh, we do have some more political power. I just want to finish this one first, though. This stuff is nice and all, and I really want to keep doing it, but... Hmm. <clears throat> 80 is really not that great. Bye. Man, if we had more anti-tank... We can't even make this stuff, so... How do we make more fuel? Create... We'll add or remove from our stock... Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's that one. Yeah, we gotta do that one more, 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 more. I should not use up all that fuel alert. So, I'm definitely learning this. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, there we go. Infantry equipment. Sell at 106 is not bad. Can you buy low and sell high? That actually might be a really good idea, but... It's not that high. Happy 1964, though, everyone. I'll go and grab some more of that. Why not? Uh, 97 is not good enough. I'm gonna wait. Infantry equipment. There you go. We're gonna need more infantry equipment now. 
I want to wait to sell this. 97 is not good enough. I want more. More, 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 more. Cool. Port development. The expansion of our smuggling fleet should be matched with an expansion of our dockyards. While we do not expect the expansion to be of long-term use in building new ships, it will provide valuable capacity for necessary repairs and maintenance, allowing for us to have more of our fleet at the sea at any one time. Which would be a good thing. Oh, now it's low. God dang it. Uh, Japanese shipping. Just keep doing Japanese ship. Create more fuel. Create more fuel. So, 97. 106 is not bad. Keep doing that. More supplies are good. More good, 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 good. Throw on the supplies. 97 is not good enough. 106. Man, I wish we had more anti-tank. That's really, really good. Hopefully next month this goes up above the base. Because I'll, I'll, you know, it's also for above the base, but... Oh! We have so much... Ah, uh, go and do that. Create a fuel shipment, too. Alright, so we have enough convoys for this. No, I don't want to spend the PP for this, though. Mm. We need more rifles at this point, too, so... Uh, supplies are nice. How should we get every... 63 is not bad. 73 is pretty good, but more rifles every time. How many rifles do we get? 25, that's not much. That's really not much. Get more, get more supplies. Cool. Board development. And we'll update it market list very soon. Sourcing our own equipment. While relying on capturing American and Japanese weapons is provided as well, so far it's proved unreliable. Establishing some basic industry, no matter how small scale, will be... Well, at least provide some basic degree of stability, which is very nice. All right, and that got worse. Gosh darn it. Oof, that is not good. We can't sell or buy anything here then. I'm not going to do it. No. Well, I might do the fuel shipment just maybe just once. We have plenty of fuel shipment anyway, so. Go and raid him. So if you want to buy this again, please go right ahead. 41 supplies, more political power. Very good. Um, remove rogue elements. I'd love to do that, but let's go to this one. Nice, 48. Uh, we're going to stay at satisfactory for a while, which is good. Very, very good. Alright. Oil tanker. Whenever a cruiser has returned with a large oil tanker, after being led back to our port and being relieved of its cargo, it's been sent back out to sea. This oil being valuable, keeping our fleet afo afloat, and allows us to continue our operations for the foreseeable future. Transfer it. No, we're going to go with this one. Give me that fuel. Ah, uh, that's not really that great. How much? How many su supplies of fuel? We have five. Do one more. That's fine. Supplies, supplies. So that's how we're going to do supply stuff. Just raiding everyone else. Cool. But letters of Marquis. We have received total tacit approval from the Americans to continue our operation, so long as they don't appear on any of our interests. While this issue of piracy is relatively cut and dry, smuggling proves more of a thorny issue. Despite not being, a, despite, despite being a huge boon for us, it is a relatively small nuance for the Americans, and all being well, we will be gone within the next few years, so it is our hope that we will be able to continue our operations in America. Maybe a few Japanese luxuries handed to the right agents will be enough to sweeten the deal. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Get more output. Get more output. We need more output right now. Ooh, baby. Whoa, mama. And we'll be done. Eh, let's go one more. Why not? Sourcing our own equipment. And letters of marquee. So some people can get really pissed off at us, which is fine. Get more guns, shall we? Because we shall. We can't make much, but it'll, it'll be something. It'll be something, man. Especially two dockyards. Ooh, freighter. One of our ships has returned with a valuable haul. Japanese goods, clothes, some exotic food, a number of jewelry, and uh, interesting new electronics. The crew will be given the cut, then the rest will be sold on. Success. Oh, very political power. Wow, that's actually really, really good. Wow. Now, if we go up to ooh, 50, we do get more naval XP, and we could really use more naval XP at this point. But, what happens when we do the trial? I want to know what happens when we do the trial. So, let's do this one. And let's remove rogue elements. The trial. Lieutenant Nicola Gulen sat slumped in a chair before his desk. A one eye was swollen with dark bags under his eyes, clearly sleep deprived. Before him sat two officers and a commissar. The officer standing to, to the side of him, serving as a prosecutor, continued, I'd like to call my next witness, Andrei Ignatiev. Gulen's heart sank, No more, please. Comrade Ignatiev, do you swear to tell the truth before this tribunal on pain of the uh, fleet's justice? Asked the officer in the center of the table. I do, said Andre flatly. The prosecution may continue. The prosecuting officer turned to Andre. Comrade Ignatiev, do you recognize Lieutenant Nikolai Gulin in this room? Andre slowly nodded. Verbally, please, Comrade Ignatiev, demanded the pr prosecutor. I do, responded Andre. Please read out the sworn statement you have presented to the court, Comrade Ignatiev. 
Andre slowly pulled out a small piece of paper and began. Over the course of a number of years, Lieutenant Nikolai Gulin passed on to me and sold for a large profit a large number of goods stolen from the fleet. All these items I still have. I have surrendered to the fleet in a hope of clemency. Have such items been surrendered? Asked the officer in the center. Yes, sir, responded the prosecutor as he gestured to the table to the left. As you can see here, sir, there are a number of items presented as evidence. The table included a watch, a set of cutlery, a number of plates, and a single bottle of vodka. Very good, said the officer in the center. I think that's enough, Comrade Ignatyev. You may leave. Ignatyev turned around to leave, trying to avoid the gaze of Gulin. It didn't matter. Gulin was only staring blankly into the middle distance. Comrade Gulin, on all charges presented before you, or before the, presented before the court, you were found guilty because of the length of time you perpetrated per these crimes and the considerable financial rewards you personally received at the expense of the fleet. I see fit to hand down to you the maximum sentence, which is death by a firing squad, to be carried out immediately. The gavel fell and Gulin was led outside. We lose a manpower, but professionalism. Oh, did that increase professionalism? Oh, that's high. Nice. That's high for now, of course. We'll see. Failure? What the heck? Next time? What? There might not be a next time, you pieces of the garbage. Hey, that's maxed out, though. That's beautiful. Beautiful. We got a few ships. I'm feeling a little better about those guys. Hope you are as well. Trade some more. That'd be very, very, very nice. Commodities would be nice. Yeah. How much do we get every time now? Because now we can just get guns. 25 guns. 73. Oh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, I'm glad I waited a little bit longer for this stuff. Just sell it. Sell, 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 sell. Two days left, and here okay, another fuel shipment. We have one. So 120 is not bad, man. That is not bad. 258 is not bad. All right, we got another ship ready to go. I don't think we're we'll we going to be able to get all these ships, but we'll see what happens. So another one. Good. Can we make some more? Hopefully. Yes, we can. So now we can rage Japanese ships still, but their displeasure with us is not going to go down. While the fleet is excellent at projecting power and bringing in supplies, if we want to reach further inland, it must rely on our ever-dependable naval infantry. They performed admirably in the exercises, and we've learned much. It's time to put these lessons into practice. Now, that's nice, but we're not really using Marines too much. Lessons from the exercises, land action is nice, but do we really want to do that? Weapons review, as well as naval engineers. I'll be honest, like I don't know if there's going to be any sort of benefit to doing these. So, uh, we'll do this one. Um, if we don't get any sort of event to get us any more political power or, or professionalism or anything like that, then I'm not going to do the other three. So, just because that's a good source of political power. There's no point to do something if you're not going to get, you know, rewarded, right? Smuggling network size is 10, huh? Alright. Commodity smuggling network is huge. Oh, crap. North Awakens, we must prepare for this new threat. May God welcome our wayward soul. Uh, if you like your brothers, please go right ahead. Please don't focus on us first. Please, 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 please. Available trades is one. Supply is zero. Not good. Alright, good to know. Anything else here? Create a fuel shipment. Might as well. Alright, so we got some more here. Fuel, I mean, that's okay. So, six, 65 days, so, huh? Hmm. Well, we can wait for that for now. Um, all right, so what's the prices like now? Probably really bad since the market is probably glutted with a lot of stuff. Wow, what happened to our supplies? How do we get that many supplies? Holy crap! Um, buying support equipment now would be. Pr um, can I buy that and sell that for later? Hmm. Alright, so did that really increase our supplies? Or, I don't see anything here that really helped us out, so... At this point, screw it. I'm just gonna go for political power then. And 1.34 should be the daily gain that we currently get, but... Yeah, screw that. I'm, I, we gotta keep go going this way. Especially with the Divine Mandate of Siberia here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, we can sell for 107. Eh... We could try that. I guess why not. Create more fuel. Alright, not bad. We do have 39. I want to do another raid though. I, oh, Tomsk Unified Central Siberia. Good for you guys, I guess. I want to get more naval, uh, more naval XP as well. That'd be really good. Oops. It's only 100, but whatever. Sell it. Create fuel shipment. Come on, let's get to 50. I want to raid, raid, raid. 
There you go. Alright, so then... Oh... Wait. Oh, we have to wait for the thing to pass. That's fine. We're almost there anyway, so not too bad. 9.62. Come on, we need to do the Japanese ships and get it higher, higher, higher. How's the prices? Oh, that's not looking good. But if we sell this now... We did make a little bit of a profit, so let's do that one. We gotta just piss off the Japanese ships. Save the fuel for now. Save the fuel. Raid them, raid them, raid them, raid them. Piss them off. Vigilant? That's not good. Decays by zero each month. Create some more fuel. Create some more fuel. 88's not very good. Man, trying to get political power is so bad right now. 1,500 supplies is not too bad, though. That's really not too bad. Uh, let's get a few more days of fuel. And, okay, let's go there. The Sins of Aroots. Oh, boy. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. That's just because of the Divine Mandate of Siberia. This is not good. This is not good. It's currently high, which is nice. Um, uh, I think I want to wait to do this one, maybe. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Oh, come on. I need to sell more stuff. And... At least... It has to be 10% full. Well, it's not going to be full for a while then. Oh, boy. Just in case. Let's go see if we can put some supplies here, too. Nice. Nice. Quite a few of our ships are actually doing okay now. Oh, cargo freighter. Look at that. 20 supplies. 30 more political power. Yes, please. Now, that is good. Now, that's very, very good. Oh, there we go. Sell, 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 sell. Give me all them goods. Actually, 95. You can buy and then sell it, so. Eh, but overall, that's not too bad. Not too great. Create a fuel shipment. Thank you. And we still have 202 supplies. Not bad. The Amer Japanese are concerned, as they probably should be. Uh, fleet exercises. Go and do that one. Because then we get more naval XP, which is incredibly, incredibly important. Oh, but goodbye, Kennedy. Not bad, not bad so far. Hopefully, by doing this, we get a ton of supplies. Just tons and 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 tons. Effect in 15 days, we will get 672 more supplies. Not bad. Not bad. Can we create more fuel yet? Nope. That sucks. Can we hurry up with that? Raid Japanese ships. We gotta piss them off some more, so just... Oh, crap. That's not good. That's not good. Man, trying to pace this thing is kind of not great sometimes, you know. I'll do that one too. Thank you. So can we just leave whenever we want? I don't think we get gotta get through some more focuses first. Hope the Marines can hold. I really hope that they can hold. Oh boy, skirmisher, probing attack, paraglides. Uh, you're the best general we have for defense. So yeah, nope, we're probably gonna lose. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh crud. So we got a lot more supplies now too, but we got to piss off the Japanese some more. This is not good. We need, we need this is like fifteen hundred more supplies. Oh boy, oh boy. Ah oh crap, that's not good. As long as they don't fight us, we're okay. Add fuel to stockpile. No, we're good. Cargo fair, great. More supplies, more political power, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. We need to get over that much about political power. Oh, man, I hope they don't attack us too much. I'm not going to waste political power with that stuff anymore, though. Japanese shipping is angry. Ooh. Do we want this one or do we want that one? We want this one. Keep it in our stores. Yes, yes. Oh, get more naval XP. Huh. Oh, we're really close for both these. We need at least 90 professionalism. It's such a race to try to get up here. We need that naval XP, so grab that one. We could sell for 95. Oh, I think we might want to wait. If we can wait, that'd be good. We don't have that many supplies. I think it's best to wait, though. I think, I think it's really just best to wait. Wow, what? Trying to get more ships. Fuel is really bad. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hold the line, my friends. And there goes Hadrish. <clears throat> I will authorize you to withdraw to the forest, but you will hold your positions. Admiral Yumashev spoke down the receiver. Yes, aerial support is on its way. Commodore, Commodore, listen, you will be evacuated by sea from the prepared position. It's imperative that you hold these positions at all costs with hopes of everything we have worked towards to rest on, rest on the courage and determination of your men. Of that, I have no doubt. Commodore, good luck. We should send Okia Brskaya Revolutia. She would give those zealots a good pummeling, suggested Admiral Kolsenek. 
If they want to pick a fight with their fleet, they should face a fleet. You're right, Kolsinik. I'll send it under the command of Arkipov. Yegori, or Yegorov. A fluster orderly peeked his head into the room. Get Arkipov here immediately. Yes, Comrade Admiral, replied the orderly before sc scurrying away. We need to expedite our final preparations too. I don't know how long the naval infantry will be able to hold against that mob. Andreev, get me Shudrin. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now we can do that. I do want some more. I just do that anyways. Exemplary. Look at that. Now that's nice. Very high professional. We actually get more division defense, which is awesome. More, way more political power. Way more. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not great, but not too bad. Really, not too bad, my friends. We just gotta wait for the next day because I'm not gonna sell 95. It's probably gonna go down to something like 80. Oh crap, that's not good. Oh wait, I thought we were going to war with us earlier. Um, actually, can we do this one? Pirates in the Caribbean. The Americans have agreed that our warships will be able to pass through the Panama Canal. Although this is not the full agreement, we need. This bypass is the largest hurdle to our operation with the most potential, ten, potential distance we must travel being massively reduced. Oh crap, that's not good. You gotta hold. I don't want to do it like that, but we've got to hold. There we go. Stamp out unsanctioned piracy. Good. The right man for the job. Commodore, Commodore Arkhipov announced Yumashev. Vasily Arkhipov stood proudly in front of the desk of Admiral Yumashev. You have distinguished yourself in the past few months and you run a tight ship. Your command has continued to serve as an example for the rest of the fleet to follow. Thank you, Comrade Admiral, responded Arkhipov, holding back a smirk. As a result, you've been chosen to lead the assault on the last significant pirate stronghold in the area. We believe to be the remainder of the mutineer Captain Savinsky, men operating out of ust Kamchabriba. While we don't expect them to be heavily armed, you will make a display of overwhelming force to reassert ourselves of the power to be reckoned with. You will command the destroyers Riani and Buharin, seal up the coast to Ust Kamchadirbia, and commence a bombardment of any fortified positions you find. Naval infantry will establish a beachhead and fight their way into Savetsky's compound, clear any resistance you find. If you can capture Savitsky alive, you will then proceed to establish command in the region to pick off any stragglers that may have slipped away in their initial assault. Bring back any valuable materials you find that could be a benefit to the fleet, understood? And with no delay, Arkhipov responded, Yes, Comrade Admiral. Very good, Commodore. Begin your preparations. This is not good. We're, we're, I'm literally just going to sacrifice some Marines here if we can. I'm um, going to do that too. Maybe we can sell some more stuff at the last little moment here. Okay, that's not bad. Sell, 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 sell. I'm not going to sell if it's too good because the Marines are going to need it. They, they th came out with more guys. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. That's not good. That's not good. The assault at 6.30 a.m. Just as the sun began to, began to rise, a bombardment began. After so many years of hit-and-run tactics, avoiding engagements, subterfuge, <clears throat> and so it felt good to be aboard a ship, firing everything she had at the real target. It's not something Arkhipov had ever known, only having joined the fleet at 16 in the dying days of the last war. All said, he felt a little uneasy in the command of such power, wondering what it must be like being on the receiving end of such a bombardment. Now is not the time to dwell on such thoughts, and though he had been entrusted with his mission. He picked up the receiver from the control panels in front of him. Captain Semenyov began the assault as planned. Shortly after he watched as the smaller landing boats propelled themselves forward from the destroyers under the cover of the barrage and two Yak-3 fighters circling overhead. Through his binoculars, he watched as the naval infantry fanned out across the shoreline, firing as they moved forward, sitting at machine gun positions and lobbing mortar shells as the barrage ended with the infantry on land. From this moment on, he would, be trust, he would trust in the commanding abilities of his officers and the courage and training of his men as they slowly left view as they entered the village. Sometime later, with the operation complete, he communicated back to Admiral Yumashev the result. Although he had been unable to capture Savitsky alive, the operation had been a stunning success. Scores of valuable equipment were seized, and the holdout has been completely eradicated. Admiral Yumashev seemed to be overjoyed with the results as well. Congratulations, Counter Admiral Arkhipov. Well, that's nice and all, but, uh, we ain't doing so well right now, so, yeah. We lost 3,000 to their 1,000, which is really just god awful, but sell, 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 sell. We're completely out of stuff. Oh, crap. Can you hold? Can you hold? Hold, hold. Oh, maybe, 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 maybe. There's no forts here. They have only one division for now. Good. Hold, hold, hold. Military access has been requested by the... Uh, given by the U.S. Good, good, good. Um... The route's secured. Finally, the Americans have offered us conditions to allow us to dock in their ports. Once we have docked in our first American port, we will sail officially as American ships. This bypasses the issue of the Americans needing to recognize their state and giving them an excuse for why they would allow pirates into their ports. Well, this will undoubtedly be unpopular with some of our more ideological officers. They... They can't deny it, the fact that this secures one of the most potentially most dangerous parts of our journey. Once we pass Eisen, we will be well within the range of German bombers, and seeing Russian warships flying into their own flag would present an easy target. Under the American flag, we will force the Germans to think twice. Hopefully. Oh, crap. Oh, no, they came over. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you gotta hold, son. You gotta hold. You're... No, you're not gonna give up. We literally cannot give up right now. Because if it happens, then we... I gotta do some things off screen, then. Oh, boy. Yeah. Marines, you gotta hold forever. If you possibly can. Can we raid some more ships? Yes. Oh, 
This is so bad. Yakon wins there. Okay, cool. Professionalism, decrease professionalism, increase professionalism. Nope, 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 nope. You gotta hold, son. You gotta hold. What are the routes like? There goes Goring. Goodbye, Goring. We don't have enough for this one ship. God dang it. I hate the divine man to disappear so much. Why? Create a fuel shipment? Can we use that to sell it? Maybe. Eh, it's probably too late for that anyways. Borman wins. Press update. Come on. Can We gotta go, 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 go. Get out of here. American ships. Ivan Maslenikov burst into the children's office in a fit of rage. American flags? Have you lost your mind, Grigory? We were handing over our ships to the capitalists. You're going to put a little bad word American flag on the Bukharin on the Oktyabrsk Revolution? Maslenikov, calm down, children decided it was best to try to pull rank. He didn't want a legal ruling of, of if a vice admiral outranked the political chief officer. We're not handing the ships over to the Americans, just registering them in America as a technicality. If we classify ourselves as American shipping, we are protected by uh, from any potential German bombers. Do you think the Germans are going to let the resurgent Soviet Navy sail right past their puppet in Norway and do nothing about it if we don't have an America be don't have America behind us? Then have the Americans show their worth and escort us. Do you think the Germans are so stupid that a uh, bad word battleship is going to as an American cargo ship, maybe be contained by Popeye and will be delivering a buttload of uh, spinach. Maslenikov was now right in the face. Children paused for a moment. He's not quite sure what Maslenikov meant, but he caught the gist. It's just about plausible deniability. The Germans have to respond to American ships so far into the waters. With this plan, they can protest. The Americans can deny there's anything going on. Everyone's puffed out their chests, and the world goes on. Besides, the state of Germany is right now is in right now, they can barely issue more than a token objection. Then why do we need the, this is pointless, even if will listen. And with that, Maslenikov left the room. Good luck, Ivan. And good luck to us, because we're about to die. Like, this is God, just God-awful right now. Holy crud. Uh, okay, so seven days. Operation Ithaca. It is time, over two decades since our struggles began, it's finally time to reassert ourselves as a real Navy again. And this operation will make it home and rejoin the fight, or the last remnant of the large fleet will shatter. Either way, it's time to put the shame of piracy behind us. All we can hope is that everything we've done, all the things we can lead up to this moment, have been worth it. Begin our final preparations? I don't know if beginning final preparations is a good idea. You should have been done with final preparations for a long time now, to be honest with you, but whatever. Oh boy, this is not bueno. This is so not bueno. Oh, we got 520 supplies though. Good, we can at least take two more ships with us. One, and two. Now, we have 206. If we had another 100 supplies, then that'd be okay, but let them spread out, maybe. Operation Ithaca, good, good, good. Now we can do this stuff, but at this point, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Engineers probably would have been good to do, but whatever. How do we leave? Oh, there we go. Dedicate more personnel. It's not a coincidence that Admiral Yumashev named the operation as such. It took Odysseus 20 years to return to Ithaca from his travels, all, almost as long as it was taken us. Although under no illusions, this will be a true homecoming. It'll mark the fleet's spiritual homecoming. When we rejoin the front, we will join them in their decades-long struggle. We will lend everything we have to the fight, and we'll begin to atone for the, what we have done to get there. Cool. Still only 206 supplies, which is not good. Speed up operations. 60 days? We don't have 60 days. Why is it 60 days? Why? You should be able to do this. Hold on. You should be able to do that as soon as you get to the route secured. So we can actually launch the operation. So. Abandonment of supplies. Remove five days. Um, I'd rather lose this. Dedicate more personnel. Even though I'd rather do a speed of preparations. Remove five days. I'd rather do that one. Japanese. Oh, take it. Good. Good, good. There we go. We got more per, uh, army. Uh, more stuff there. Good. Sell, 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 sell. A few more supplies. Uh, more political power. Speed of preparations. 54 days. Oh god, oh god, this is so bad. Um, I'd rather lose command power and manpower, so dedicate more personnel. That's good. I don't want to abandon our portion supplies, even though it doesn't really matter too much. Because that's losing 200. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. you got to hold your butts. You know what? It's this tile down here. So, give us some more time. Retreat for now. You'll totally be okay. Just because these guys are still moving in. So, research doesn't mean jack squat when we you know leave, but whatever. Go for more resources, I guess. It means nothing to me right now at all. Um, oh, speed up preparations. We can do that again. Oh, that'd be so nice. Leave, 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 leave. You gotta hold out. You're gonna have to hold out, son. There's no waiting here. I don't want to lose supplies, though. Personnel, we've no map power. Oh, boy. Um, 32 days. Can we hold for 30 days? Probably not, honestly. Probably not. Oh, man. Um, wait, how many supplies do we have? 226. Well, we could try to put them on, and then lose some... What if we try that? And then... Oh, we need actually supplies. We... 
I don't like that. I really don't like that. You've got to hold out, man. You've just got to hold out. They're only militia, which is fine and all, but... Okay, we held out. We held out. Speed of preparations. 23 days. 23 days. Can we hold for 23 days? Come, for the love of God, you've got to hold. Hold, hold, hold your butts. No, you're not, you're not losing yet. Why do they all stack up on one tile? We have 330. 330. Oh, we could speed it up. We, could, we probably need to speed it up. I don't want to lose an extra ship, though. We don't have the political power for that, but we almost do. Oh, this is... Oh, man. Oh, we, oh, 10 days. Even 10 days holding out. I'm not going to abandon that ship. I don't want to abandon that ship. No, 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 no. We're going to take almost everything with us. We'll take nothing. Oh, what happened there? Something happened. Uh, Wait, do we still have 200 supplies? We do have 256. Screw it. We're going to do it. Seven days. You've got to hold up for seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Oh, man. We're cutting it close. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Come on. Three days. Two days. Two days. You don't lose. Don't lose. Operation Ithaca. Ivan Yumashev stood above over the table as maps sprawled across it with the high, fleet's high command standing around. Comrades, this is Operation Ithaca. What we have spent the last two years preparing for, all we have done has led to this operation. Every ship that we have made ready for the voyage will leave the port of Petro Pavlovsk, Kamchatsky, crossing the Bering Strait and following the west coast of America south. After making a brief stop in San Diego, we'll continue south through the Panama Canal and head north along the eastern seaboard, stopping for a final time in Norfolk. Here is where the most dangerous leg of our journey begins. We will continue north past Canada, past to the north of Iceland, entering the Norwegian Sea. Once we are past Iceland, the area is much more heavily patrolled by the German Kriegsmarine. We don't know the current operational status due to the ongoing civil war in Germany, but we will still remain on high alert for the remainder of our voyage. American agents in the front will notify them of our impending arrival. However, this is where our lead ship will break into, from the main formation and speed ahead to give notice to our front of our imminent arrival. Then we will be home. We will no longer be able to make any changes in the ship management interface. We await your orders to launch. We gotta go now, son. We are on the... Last day legs. We gotta go. As much as I want to save the ships here. Ah. Uh. Launch, launch. Cast off. Well, here it is. Over the last few weeks, everything that could have been carried was loaded onto the warships, and a few smuggling vessels deemed substantial enough to manage a journey. Inventories have been checked. Each man had been accounted for and assigned his post and duties. Charts have been assembled. Courses plotted, and all diplomatic arrangements made. They... They had the word of the Americans that the front would be expecting them, but with all its efforts over the past few years leading to this moment, Yumashev had given little thought to the future. Shedrin was right. This endeavor certainly reformed the fleet. It would now moved with purpose and unity, but was it worth it? Would these aging ships be even of use to us at the front? Would the meager supplies they were bringing be worth all the extra mouths to feed? Now is not the time to dwell on these things. Cast off, Yumashev gave the order, and the fleet was underway. This fleet, the sea would be his home again for the next three months, at last living like a proper sailor again. No more ordering raids from the safety of land, no more sending boys to die smuggling a few guns to some Korean partisans. Again, it began to nag at him, only just as he had been dispelled the thought from his mind. Was it worth it? Everything he had done was to protect the fleet and its sailors, so that one day we can rejoin the fight for Russia. Now the day is here. If you want to see the final event, put event... Okay, let me write that down. KM... Let's see, so event... Dot... Oh no, just KM. Event KMCGP... C... KMCGP... Dot 600 into the console. If you still want... You will still get the normal one in 90 days, though. Don't worry, this... If you keep playing as WRF. Anyways, thanks for playing. Now the day's here. All right, cool. So now we're the WRF, please. And we're playing a Zukov. Look at that. Wow. So, where are they in the tree? Um, Friends of Sixty Card. Honestly, it's not too much here. So they're playing with Zukov. Uh, not bad. And we're currently at war with Vologda. That's kind of cool. Um, You know what? If that's the case... Hmm... Maybe I should just continue Zukov. <clears throat> With that in mind, though, uh, I guess I could read Secure Foothold. But no, actually, we have nothing here to do since we have to kill off the log. So, you know what? Let me put that event into the uh, thing here. Maybe just in case. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, hmm. 90 days. That could be quite a while. You know what? No, screw it. Let's just try it right now, shall we? Jimmy Resource Control of Central Europe. I've not played a Zukov before. I've played as. Uh, what, is that? what are they making around here? Fuel silos? Um, I played as Duke Chesky, so if there's enough support in the comments section for me to continue playing as Zukov, please let me know in the comments below. But we'll try this just a little bit for now. What do we, what do we even have? We have stuff. A lot of it shouldn't be too bad, right? What is this army? Uh, this is looking not great. Because I do want to see what happens in the next few days, so... I go. Everyone go over there, and you guys, you did it. Okay. 
There you go. If you can, thank you. Let everyone go. This is not too bad. Black market payments? Yeah, no thanks. Of course, we are out of manpower, so that's gotta be... We gotta be careful about that, too. And we have a lot of, uh... Stuff here, too. Uh, Kostrama. There you go. Get some extra help. That'd be nice. Cut them off. Just cut them off. That's the most important thing. Take the capital. We want time to go on as long as possible. So that this way, we can see the event most normally. If not, I have the event written down, so that's totally okay. Uh, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Untrustworthy people. Ghost drama. Good. And the gun. <clears throat> and my voice cracked for some reason. Holy crap. Oh, that's a brotherhood. I thought it was Samada. Wow. What happened with the brotherhood here? Holy crud. That's actually kind of scary. I didn't think that we'd do that well, but... Watch collateral damage. The staff of Ka was disappointed in hearing a rejection from her old comrade in Belagda. And have grown even more disappointed with the aftermath. An unnecessary war has wrought disturbing and fruitless collateral damage. Much of Belagda's industrial base has been destroyed in the fighting against by careless Red Army soldiers. Many civilians lie dead in our quest to save the innocent Russian people. We have also inflicted damage upon them. This is a tragedy that cannot be allowed to happen again. We must further instruct our soldiers on the importance of battlefield discipline. If we are to save Russia, we need both intact infrastructure and support of the people. Wow. Wow, I don't care about black market purchasing. Um, I like to do that. I like to do this too. Um, we could try it. How strong is Samara though? They're also out of manpower, so I guess we could try against these guys, maybe. I guess. Integrate Vologda, which we need to do definitely. Um, I don't care about the trading. I really don't. Wow, this is kind of wild. I don't remember doing that again, but okay. It's interesting seeing what the AI has done so far, so. Yeah, our soldier's not great. How many... Oh, we got plenty of guns. Militia. Oh my goodness, what type of templates do they make? I don't even I don't even want to know what they made. Uh, these infantry... That's not bad. Actually, these are better. Template 1 is better. How about template 2? Template 2 is even better. Template 3 is nice. Template 3 is probably really bad to convert to now. The infantry that we currently have, template 3 is what we want. Cool. So then we can get rid of these guys. Infantry template 4, I don't even want to be bothered with that stuff. What is template 8 like? Oh, that's 30. Okay. Line infantry, we have to do a 17 army XP. That's fine. You know what, actually, with this one, we're going to turn... Oh, actually, that's not as good as this one. Line infantry template. Convert this to... Light infantry. Good. And that light infantry will be doing this stuff. Oh, there already is. Good. Not bad. Uh, don't cancel that. We can actually use that. Go low, go high. We need some more divisions. Template 3 is king. Oh, we don't believe in kings here. We're, we're, we're communists. Okay, so securing a foothold. Thus far, Operation Mercury has been a resounding success. The land conquered or acquired in recent months is a greater victory than we could have ever hoped to afford before the succession of German bombings. The soldiers of the front revel in their victory, but as any commander knows, armies must be given time to rest and recuperate between campaigns. And thus, the Grand Marshals declared a period of consolidation. The army will work towards building or rebuilding infrastructure newly liberated regions as well as to register all of our newly acquired citizens. When the front marches once again, it will be well rested, bolstered by the land and the workers we have freed from the shackles of petty warlords ruling over them. Which is a good thing. Now, can we actually attack them for realsies? What are they doing here? Securing control? Why are we doing that? Well, we'll see what happens. I guess. They pay tribute, okay. I was gonna wait to do this until the focus is done, but 45 days and I will do it anyways. Agriculture oh, equipment, uh, what are we doing down here? They're doing, they did a lot of academic base, holy crap. Agriculture would be good, equipment is looking pretty good as well. The manpower is really concerning me. Uh, just do equipment, why not? 45 days is quite a long time though. It's fine. Just do all that stuff. An ultimatum from... I hate Onega, man. I really do. Really, man? The dream falters. Goodbye. We'll get our guys up here. Oh, do we actually have planes? That's actually... Really... Oh, we do have planes. Look at that. Nice. Why does AI do 150? They always do that. I'm not sure why. There's some cast. That's not bad. Put them on the infantry for now. And... Nine days. Five. And they're fighting over river. Two, th four, five, four. Yeah, five goes after four. Then three, two. Come on. One. 
Eh, it's kind of done so cool and all, but whatever. Okay, vacuum tube computer. What is it? What's AI I've been researching? Oh, we need some of that too. I hope they've been doing some of the land doctrine. I really do. All right, and consolidated resources, direct integration of industrial facilities, tactical overview, uh, agricultural. So thank the farmers. Now that our fruit grass is over and our fortunes have improved drastically, we can look back at the people who made our windfall possible. The loyal farmers who feed the WRFs' armies even at their darkest hour. Their heroic struggle to produce sufficient quantities of food for the military caused a great deal of suffering and sacrifice. It is time that the state honor their contributions to the communist cause. We will immortalize our farmers with a statue in every city. Expansive amounts of government aid will give them the support to feed themselves and their families, although we are quite aware that no amount of tractors or fodder could ever repay what they've given to the people of the Soviet Union, of course. Ugly truth. All right, and we're winning quite handily here. But they're still giving us quite a run for our money. A flawed structure. Grand Marshal, I have something I wish to discuss with you. Zukov looked out from the papers on his desk. It was Comrade Yakolev. Yakolev was a firm ally of Zukov and led a large faction of reformists within the front. Ah, oh, Comrade Yakolev, have a seat. What was it that you wished to discuss? Replied the Grand Marshal, motioning towards the chair in front of his desk. I purely wish to discuss several flaws in how the front is organized, purely from an administrative point of view. I just don't believe... Our uh, current model is sustainable. I understand the Red Army is crucial to survival, but the people need their voices to be heard. The civilian populace needs more say in how things are run, our economy needs to be less militarized, and the military needs checks and balances to keep it from devolving into an oppressive junta. Comrade, the reforms you are proposing are quite extensive. Are you sure this is purely administrative? Grand Marshal, I assure that I hold no ill will towards the revolution. I merely believe that the people need to play a bigger role in it. Well, Comrade, I will certainly consider it. However, I think we should wait until things are more stable around here before we rush into a reform. Now, Comrade, I have a lot of work to do at the moment. With that said, Zukov returned to the report stacked upon his desk. Understood, sir. Thank you for your time. Zukov barely heard the door close a moment later. Under the conditions of friendship, the country will surely uh, perish or prosper. I don't know. Black market? No one cares. Good job, guys. You held off against the beast that is those guys over there. And we do some more political power, which is actually pretty nice. And my voice is cracking again. What's going on? And then how about a tactical overview as we were waiting for that one event? As we consolidate our control over the more and more of West Russia, the military doctrines we've developed are half-starved warlords stately, becoming increasingly obsolete. We're working on a larger scale now, fielding, of, fielding quantities of men and equipment that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. In some ways, we're closer to the front that took on Germany in the 50s than the front caged up in our Congos. <clears throat> it's now time to gather experts and pull out mothballed plans from our days past. As we enter the next phase of Russia's liberation, it is vital that we overhaul our tactics to fit the new circumstances that we find ourselves in. The battles coming up will be our largest yet, and for the sake of the Soviet people, we must be well prepared. Pretty good. Touring the farms. It was a scene that Zukov remembered well. Hundreds of peasants tilling the fields in preparation for the seared seeds, as well as the sunny, bright, and cheerful look of the farmers. A long time ago, even before the Great War, he was raised in such a household. It was a memory that kept him going through the harshest decades of Russian history, from the loss of its pride to the Germans at brest litovsk the revolution of 1919, and the ongoing Great Patriotic War. The image of the Union drove him forward, one indivisible, inseparable, invincible. Hoy, a peasant said, addressing the Grand Marshal. Marshal, sir, do you have time? The peasant accent was something familiar, yet faint in Zukov's memory. He felt home there, somehow among the copper bodies and calloused hands of the farmers, in the middle of the sunlight and patch patches of mel melting dew and morning frost. One of his staff members strode forward, intending to show the peasant away. Don't bother the marshal with your insane or inane quest. That's all right, he said. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. The countryside is beautiful this year around. One can hardly resist not getting lost in its allure, your question was. The peasant began his litany of complaints, censorious and critical against the previous government's shortcomings. In a dramatic flourish, the marshal whipped out his notes and pencil and began to write, keeping up appearances as usual, although admittedly the people who lived in the land might know how to write it best. Thank you, thank you, he said, after wasting three pages of notes. I'll make sure that the front takes care of your concerns. Would that be all? The peasant nodded, and the marshal took his hand. Thank you, the marshal said. We were, were not for your efforts, we would starve. A successful public performance. On guns are giving. Oh, boy. Mikhail Voronin was a powerful figure to many. Having served along the front lines against the Germans, he may not have been an officer back then, but by God in heaven did it allow for some heavy qualifications to be given to him in the election for leadership in his small village. Plus, being a father helped a lot, and being know what it meant to be able to do some good things for a community. However, it almost felt like as if none of that mattered in these next few moments, or all of it mattered. Voronin sure as heck didn't know anymore, as the caravan pulled in the snowy thicket. Or into the snowy thicket. Out of the middle car step, the sir, Mr. Luganov, had been tasked with meeting the one it meant to coordinate an arms with. However, the potential death... Uh, on the horizon, thanks to the Lord's attacks against the people of the house, Mikhail's left uns uh, unsure. Oh, actually, I've heard this one before many times. So if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Um, yeah, this is, happens all the time. So my apologies for reading that, but I've read it so many times before, I don't need to read it again. And hopefully you guys heard it before a long time before. And we're about to court Vologda. And hopefully we get this special event about the ships making it over here. We made, I think, all but two ships? This happened again, okay? All's forgiven, I guess. But all but two ships have 
hopefully are making it over here so consolidate our resources. Although the Communist Party now reigns supreme over much of West Russia, the same cannot be said about the socialist economic system. Since we last vacated these areas, a messy hodgepodge of capitalist and even pre-capitalist productive relations have become a standard throughout. Currencies and business practices vary, and some areas have ceased to use money as a medium of commerce at all, regressing to the barter instead. We need to harmonize and standardize our economy in order to effectively coordinate production. Work will begin immediately on incorporating West Russian commerce into our own system, with the goal that a central administration has necessary control to continue development. A reunion. Oh, here we go. This is what we want, so it happens in 55 minutes. Cool. It was with a sense of trepidation that Nikolai Kuznetsov watched the remains of the Pacific Fleet enter the port of Arkhangelsk. As Admiral of the Front's fleet, it fell to him to welcome the new ships. The only problem being he had no ships of his own to command, so it felt rather impotent in the face of these new arrivals. As the ships sailed past, sailors lined the deck saluting to the shoreline. Hearing Alexandrov's band blasting out the Internationale on the shore, and the red flag fluttering from the mass of the arriving ships was certainly a powerful sight. These were men coming back to join the fight. He could not help but wonder what hardships they had endured out in the Far East, if they were anything like the years of struggle and resistance that the Front had put up over the last 20 years. He would no doubt find out soon enough, he wondered. All that mattered now was the, the two arms of the Soviet military were back together. The fleet arrived, whether they knew it or not, as a p pivotal time in history where the German bombings over the front was once again on the march. And this time there would be no failure. Order and justice would be restored over Russia and retribution delivered to all those who had humiliated and exploited her people. Hand in hand, the Red Army and Navy would drive out the robber hordes and thieving bandits. On top of the gangplank, Admiral Yumashev appeared, a man Kuznov had not, see had not seen in a very long time. After descending, Yumashev offered a sharp salute, which was returned in kind by Kuznov, followed by a sharp handshake, and then an embrace. It's good to be home, Nikolai. We are not home yet, Ivan. So, we, there's a lot of people who joined the West Russian Revolutionary Front, transferred a percentage of its forces to the West Russian Revolutionary Front, Smirnov becomes a naval commander, any shops we manage to fully supply will appear in a port with our naval infantry. We actually came back with the division. Look at that. That's so nice. We I was going to sacrifice these guys, but holy crap, they actually made it. And we have another military three more military factories. Okay, that's pretty cool. Nice. Wow. This was this was I'll be honest, this is quite the journey. This is what the, the AI was making. Why are we making this stuff? We need cast. We need stuff like this. So cool. Uh we don't need that either. Main battle tanks, and we need APCs. Oh, do we have artillery being made? Yes. We have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six APCs. Cool, but I think if there's nothing else here, awesome, awesome. That's actually really cool. I guess we didn't get any extra loot, which kind of sucks. But hey, that's okay. Well, if you enjoyed the uh, campaign so far in the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know if we should continue this campaign playing the West Russian Revolutionary Front, which I feel like we should. But regardless, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.